How's it going, doggy people? I hope you all are doing well. Uh, today we're going to go over a video of a Shiba Inu uh, named Randy. He's here for aggressive dog training. Um, this is just a great video showing body language, pressure and release, and timing um, that I thought would be great to show as an example. Um, of course, I mean, no harm or no disrespect to the people training. This is just being shown for you know educational purposes and critique. So. So this is, uh, they're saying this is Randy's dad. He's here because he doesn't like being touched, even by his parents. So you can see that when he's on a slip lead, um, I, I'm not a fan of slip collars or slip leads because they tighten, they cause too much pressure. They, they're just, it's an easy way to get a dog in and out. Um, he's petting him on the back and we already showed that, you know, he has, his lips are back. He shows his mouth is wide open. He's showing a lot of discomfort. So he doesn't like being touched. Um, so yeah, he's looking at this person, sniffs that, and then he kind of go, okay, that came <laughs> kind of quick, so we'll go back. So he goes in and kind of sneaks in there, sneaks in a touch. He's uncomfortable, he shows that, and then he snaps at him. So that all could have been prevented. Now he's watching him, he's very, very stressed. Um, that could have been prevented. We don't need to see the behavior beforehand. And I'm assuming this is what was asked to do for the video to show everybody because people who don't know um, don't believe this dog is aggressive until they see it. We've been conditioned to believe that we need to see the previous behavior to either believe it or to correct it. So, so he lays down. So we have a cat. This dog was on a leash. We'll go back and just look at that. Okay, so ooh, right there. Very... I mean, cameras are awesome for catching um, footage. So this cat is coming in directly, you know, very high tail. The cat is comfortable. Cat's saying, hi, how's it going? Um, and this Shiba is on a tight slip lead. Also, the reason why I don't like slip leads because it can tighten when, you know, the, the dog can pull away and it can tighten and they don't mean to tighten it. Um, the dog's ears start to go back and his teeth are, he's showing his teeth and he's, I'm sure, giving his cat eye contact. Um, and he's immediately saying, hey, back off. So she didn't see that because she's, you know, facing the camera. I'm not going to get, you know, too on anybody's case for that. She's explaining what she's going to be doing. Um, but in the end, I would still say that this could have been prevented. I wouldn't have the cat in this area anyway. I personally wouldn't have the dog on leash. I would have them either dragging a leash, uh, hopefully on a harness, um, if you can get a harness on the dog, which may be why they have a slip lead on it. So, you know, we all learn, but... Um, I would let this dog just be running around loose. Okay, so he's very, very fearful. Lip licks, lip licks, lots of lip licks, looks away. He's trying to get away from her. So I would just let him go. I would let go of that leash. I would let him, you know, wander around. He can come to me. I'm not going to be worried about holding on to him on a leash or anything. All this tension on the leash is going to make him more nervous. So he's reactive to the cat. He's very nervous. He's an intact male which means he has been not been neutered. He has the ability to mate, so that can add to some things. Um, she has a basket muzzle, love it. She does have gloves on, so that tells me a little bit about the method that she might try to use to get, she's just gonna get it on him so she can start training. That's an option you can do if you absolutely have to. For me, first of all, I would not take, I would not necessarily recommend this dog be here for boarding um, because you really need to teach the owners how to work with this dog. now. Could I take a dog like this if I absolutely needed to into boarding? Yeah, absolutely. I could get this dog started just like she's doing. She's going to give it a, a you know, kickstart in training. Um, but I really, you know, this dog is this way because the owners have raised it to be this way. The owners have, um, have conditioned this dog and taught it and reinforced, whether knowing or not, you know, very likely unknowing, to not like touching or whenever they touch and he snaps they move away and things like that i'm not saying they need to correct this dog uh, but yeah i'm not one of those people who says you know oh the owners didn't know they mean well you know and and it's not their fault like in the end yeah it's their fault but that doesn't mean that they're bad people it doesn't mean that it's the end of the world all i mean is that you need to be able to take accountability for what you taught this dog this dog did not come into the world as a you know a teeny tiny little potato sized puppy hating to be touched. Now, yes, the, the breed, the Shiba, is notoriously known for not liking their feet touched and being very cat-like and very finicky, but they still reinforced all this behavior. So now he's looking at something else. Okay, so the, oh, <laughs> sorry, I'm not laughing at the dog, it's just cute. So him and this cat were having a little stare-off. They were having a little standoff. Again, 
get this cat out of this room. This dog, this is adding more stress to the dog. It's not helping. So this cat said, hey dude, back off. He's getting big. The dog's going to get big because the dog is nervous. The dog feels trapped. Um, these are just things I'm pointing out from the dog's point of view. To make it easier on the dog, remove the cat. And remove the leash and let the dog just walk around. So the dog is still on a tight leash. She moved the, the lock. Ooh, ooh, okay. So I don't know if she meant to correct him there. If she did, that's not good. I wouldn't want, I wouldn't correct this dog for looking at this cat. We're going to go back a couple seconds to see if she corrected him or if he just lunged and kind of hit the end of the leash. Oh, nope. Okay. So she did correct. Aha. Uh -huh. So I'm sure if I listened to what she was saying, you know, she would say that she corrected him for growling and whatnot, because that was a, a purposeful pop. I don't like that. I don't agree with that. Um, get the cat out of here. You know, the, you're setting this dog up for failure. You're working too quick. Can you have a cat in here? Eventually, absolutely. Should you? If the, the dog is going to live with the cat, you know, where you can teach the dog to be comfortable with the cat, but I don't like that already. You know, I would not have the cat in here. Again, I'd be working with the owners. I would have either a flat buckle collar or harness on him, but I would have him dragging his leash, if anything, or just running around free, and there would not be a cat in the room with me. She's getting his attention again by bringing the leash, pulling the leash back. Now here, she could be rewarding him. He wanted to go sniff. She pulled up a little bit. She doesn't have the softest of hands, I would say. And I don't mean be like, like with lotion. I mean like, you know, her movements are kind of jerky and poppy and loud, loud hands. She doesn't really, in my opinion, she's not really like teaching this dog to be soft. Um, but again, just my opinion. Okay, so again, whatever he's sniffing at, she's really hard with her, her, her leash tension. Okay, so watch him. He's going to go sniff, pull. Pull, tight, short leash, and all this could be rewarded. Every time he's sitting here calm, he's giving another lip lick, he's nervous, another lip lick. She's going to ambush him with this muzzle. He's like, oh, poor baby, poor little thing. So he's looking away, whale eyes, showing his teeth, ears are flattened. He's just so nervous. I would not even worry about this now because by putting this on i get that that you're able to touch the dog and do this and that but by putting this on for too many people that don't know it allows you to handcuff someone and then just do whatever you want to with them you know you're doing that to the dog you're you're taking away their ability to protect themselves they don't know that you're trying to help them um so i would let this dog roam around the room first and, and spend a couple of days not even touching the dog getting the dog used to myself tossing treats until they come to me and they can take a treat out of my hand and then i would you know, put this, this muzzle either on the ground, let them get used to it, um, put some treats around the muzzle, put some treats in the muzzle. There's plenty of, of um, examples of videos out there that you can see of how to properly muzzle train an animal. Um, there's even some that are great where the dog learns to put their own nose in the muzzle. Say you put the muzzle here and tie it here and the dog can go and put their nose in it while it's stationary and they can move away and get their reward. That is just terrific. So here you're moving too quickly in my opinion. Um, and I have a Shiba, so I know how they are. And my dog has never, ever shown teeth like this to me. Um, I don't even know that he's shown it to, he's never even shown teeth like this to anyone. He's never shown it to a vet. Um, he will fight. He will show whale eyes, but he's never shown teeth like this to a person, you know, maybe a dog occasionally, and then he'll snap and move away. But she's working way too fast. So there, I know I stop a lot. I talk a lot, blah, blah, blah. So here we could show, and then I would, he shows a little interest. I would mark and reward. Um, she shoves it towards his face. He gets nervous. She pulls it away. And then he says, oh, okay. It didn't go on my face yet. So if you want to use pressure and release and you don't want to use treats, then you can show the muzzle and take it away. Bring it near his face and take it away. Then bring it near his face. And then he's going to say, okay, it's going to come near my face, um, but it's not going to go on me. It's not going to hurt me. That's pressure and release at the very least if you want to do that. I will give her kudos for just holding it here and not immediately shoving it on his face and wrestling him to the ground like so many people would do. But at the same time, you're still working too fast. This dog is very nervous. He can't go anywhere. He's on about maybe six inches of lead. He has a slip lead on. You know, he's uncomfortable. This, work, this is day one of training. This is just a lot going on. He's showing more and more stress, saying, get this thing away from me. And as soon as she moves it away, he relaxes. So could he be learning that when I show my teeth, you take this away? Yes. Does that mean it's the end of the world? No. 
these people, I'll be going over some videos of people who say that, you know, you should never allow your dog to growl. I want my dog to growl because the next stage after this is just going straight to a bite. And far too many of this breed of these Shibas go you know, within the first year that they're owned, get taken to a shelter. Or within the first few years, they get put down because they're snappy dogs, because they're aggressive, because they're mean. They are not. They just, they demand respect. And he's, he's telling you when you're doing it wrong. They're a very sensitive breed. I mean, I have my Shiba for 11 years, and he's never, ever felt the need to show me his teeth. I mean, he's, he's nipped me, yeah, you know, because I was being stupid or because I was putting him in a, 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 a stupid situation that, that made him feel fearful. And so he kind of nipped me with his front teeth. Um, but he's never shown, you know, teeth like this on me. I could put a muzzle on him. I could do whatever. Um, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. Just working too fast. Okay, so he snaps at her. And then we have a cut. So what happened between that cut? So she holds it here. She's paying more attention to the camera than him. She might be making eye contact with him because it looks like he's looking at her, not the muzzle. She holds there. Too much pressure. Removes. Go back again. So she's holding this here. This is pressure. She's putting on him something in his face. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Pressure. She's not relieving pressure, as in pressure and release. So I put it here and move it away. Pressure, pressure. Looks like she might be making eye contact with him. And she looks away and he goes to snap. And then they have a cut. So what happened in that cut? I don't know. I'm not saying that she gave him a harsh correction or not. I would assume that, but I'm not going to say that. I mean, I, you shouldn't make assumptions. We don't know what happened during then. So now we have him standing up. It looks like he has soiled himself. Okay, it looks like he's pooped himself out of just sheer shutdown. And she still has the muzzle she's putting on him. So if he has soiled himself because he is so stressed that is an extreme amount of fear you're putting on this dog adonis has done that before he has pooped himself out of fear because he was at the groomers at a big box pet store getting groomed for the first and only time um, and they were so rough with him in the bath and when they put him on the grooming table and they fought with him you know because which was still my fault because i didn't look into it i didn't prepare him for any of that um, that he'd soiled himself on the table. Um, that is just, and, and ever since then, he has never wanted to go back to a pet store again. And I can't blame him for that. So she finally just, I don't know how long she's been, oh, I'm sorry, after an hour. Wow, I'm sorry if I didn't see that at first, but other people are like, dude, you know, read this. So she fought with this dog for an hour. It's no wonder this dog just, soiled himself i mean it, it's no wonder that this dog is just so exhausted that is not good that is not how you train an animal for rehabilitation or desensitization okay so day two so we see prong collars in the background we're working in a big stable barn whatever um dogs in the background so i mean he's just a stinking cutie pie so lip licks, we're going to go back and look at the lip licks. Oh, he's so cute. So he's sniffing, lip lick, lip lick. So she brings the slip lead near him. Um, I don't know if, if this is, he came with this or this is, you know, I saw a prong collar. So I assume that, again, I'm making assumptions. You know, this could be just her method of, of training is using slip leads. Um, I will give her the fact that it's nice and thick rope. It's not those thin, tiny little strands of string that a lot of other trainers like to use um but he associates the slip lead as something scary so he's lip licking so if you want to get them used to it i've worked in shelters with lots of dogs that didn't like the leash going around them you know we walked them on harnesses and all sorts and you can again toss treats around the leash you can desensitize them spend some time in the kennel with them ta uh, you know lead their head through the loop um, I mean, Adonis wears a harness every day and he still doesn't like something going over his head. So I've gotten a certain harness that clips around his neck. Um, or I will still take a treat and gently, you know, lead his head through. And he's worn harnesses his whole life and he still just doesn't like it going over his head. So, so he's 
He's getting a little bit more nervous. He says, you get near my eye. She moves it. Lip lick. He's just super nervous. Oh, good baby. And so he's tolerating it until it gets around. It gets tight. So she let go of this a little too soon, I would say. I would have let the loop, had a bigger loop and then waited until it was around his neck and then tighten it. Because here's where you get into an issue where his ears are down. It's on his face. It's under his chin. So he's getting a little bit more nervous and he's showing more teeth. And this looks like a very young Sheba. So now you're stuck. That's why I hate slip leads. I mean, they can be really helpful for situations like this, but just, I mean, yeah, because then otherwise you would have to learn how to properly condition the dog to wear a harness and clip it and get near them. And this is the quick way to get quick results. So people wonder how I would do this. Well, I mean, if I were to get in here to work with this dog, I would first just start on getting to touch him, being able to touch him. Um, yeah, if I had to use a slip lead to get him in and out, then yeah, I would, you know, I, but I also probably wouldn't have him in a small kennel like this. Um, you know, again, that's the hard thing about having like a board and train is that I would prefer the people to be working with him. I'm teaching the people how to work with him where he's comfortable. But if I had to have him here, then I would be sitting in the kennel at the other end of the kennel sideways to him. So if he's facing this way, my shoulder would be facing up and down and my hip and that would be pretzel style on the floor. And he would just come up and I would get him used to me touching him. You know, he can, first he comes up and he's comfortable coming up getting a treat. And then while he comes and gets the treat, I can just go, you know, put my hand towards his chest. If he moves away, that's okay. I'll keep my hand there a second and then I'll take it away. When I can touch his chest and I can scratch it and scratch it, you know, and, and he's more comfortable with that, you know, then I can touch his side and all this other uh, over here and I can take this leash and I can start to desensitize him with touching over here and this and that. Uh, you know, this might be the reason why they can't put a harness on him. Um, this is a more severe case that takes a lot longer than just however long he's going to be here, which I would assume maybe two or three weeks. So it's a long process. It's not just, you know, people ask, well, how would you do it? Well, for the people who ask how I would do it, I they, they don't expect me to actually go through the entire training plan. You know, I don't have a simple answer. Um, I will talk about every little baby step. So you best be prepared. If you ask me how to do something, um, you're gonna you're not gonna get a short, quick, simple answer. It's a lot more than that. So again, we have a camera on his face. The camera is kind of prioritizing. We don't know what else went on for the rest of that day. I'm sure she's explaining it. But now we have him on the slip laid on day three and he's already looking away. He's very, very stressed. You know, she looks like she's able to touch him, but he's just barely tolerating it, maybe because he's so frightened. We no longer have the muzzle on him. Um, so now, for an example like this, if I were to be here with him first, I would like him to be here without me having to hold him here. That would be Goal number one is to be able to sit in this room and him just come up to me on his own. He can sit next to me and that's fine. I would reward him. Or, I, or a reward would be that I just don't touch him. Then I can take my hand, personally ungloved hand, because if you need gloves to work with an animal, you're working too fast. Then I would take my hand, the back of my hand, and just lightly touch him and move away. And then give him a reward. Or just, if it's strictly just pressure and release, no rewards, which is not how I would do it, but I could suggest... Touch, and then move away. Touch, which is pressure, and move away. And then eventually you can like touch the top of his, his back and give a quick quick little scritch and then move away. That much. Just one hand worth of scritch and move away. And by doing that, you're teaching him to accept the touching. And in fact, maybe he can even enjoy it. But this dog is so stressed. This is day three. He has very spatulate tongue. He's looking away entirely. This tells me he is just spent and exhausted and he is not learning. He is just fearful. And he does not have any bond with this person. He's drooling. He's watching. The, again, this cat is here. I love cats. But he lip lick as soon as he sees the cat because he's probably associated when I see the cat or I growl like at a correction. This cat is walking in. This cat is fearless. I mean, I don't know if that's a smart cat or not. I think they should be a little bit worried, but... So again, the dog is growling because it has the cat behind. He's hearing and she's touching. And so he says, you know, I'm, this is a lot of pressure. There's pressure here. There's pressure here. There's pressure here. I don't like this. And so he starts growling again. And she doesn't read that. She ignores it and she keeps petting. He has long lips again. 
he's he's panting he says my growl didn't do anything so let me just just this is learned helplessness she's petting stroking god this dog is so stressed if you ever want to look at the idea of a stressed dog or the body language of a stressed dog this is it lips are long tongue is spatulate he's drooling you know he has wrinkles in his his lips he's his top line is flat his ears are flat he's just so tired and he's gonna get more and more frustrated though his pupils were also very dilated so this is the night of looks like the night of day four or maybe not this looks like daylight i don't know i can't tell so this is day four that could just be a light i don't know so we're walking so she has the muzzle on him and she has what looks like a oh god what are you doing why Oh my god, no. Okay, so she has a choke chain on him. So the slip blade wasn't enough, so now we gotta put a choke chain that has a pretty little black piece of material in it, which um you know the stores will do because people think, oh it looks less scary. We have the muzzle on, and then we take advantage of that and we pick up the dog and say, Look, he's letting me hold him. I don't hold my Sheba like this, and I trust him with my life. And he trusts me with his life his life. He would never bite me. But I don't do it because it's not comfortable for him. He's uncomfortable being lifted off the ground, let alone this dog who who might as well think she's out to kill him. So do not do it. This is leading to her false sense of, of... This is leading to a false sense of security. His pupils are dilated. He's looking away as soon as she kisses him. He does not care about you. He is waiting for you to leave him alone so he can get out of here. Choke chain, that's the only reason why he's walking. We don't know how many times she corrected him. Now he is looking at her. He looks a little bit happier. He's still stressed. But, you know, yawn. Oh, okay, so she bends down. She's still wearing the gloves, by the way. So here he looks okay. He looks like a pretty happy, I mean, stressed, but still pretty energetic Sheba. You know, they, have, they can take a lot. As soon as she gets down, he turns away and lip licks. He takes a step away, turns his head, and lip flicks. And again, she's still wearing her gloves. That little twinge of those lips. And again, that cat, another cat. And he's thinking about that cat. He sees that cat. She's telling him, you know, leave it, good job. Okay, and then we got a little glimpse of that, so we don't know. It cut. Now she's brushing him. Again, a slip lead. And he is super stressed. He is only accepting this because... He is punished otherwise, or because she doesn't leave him alone until he does. Another cat going by. This dog is so stressed. And again, this is nothing personal against this lady. It's just, I'm just saying that I don't believe that she is properly educated in animal body language, or if she is, she's just plain ignoring it. I'm not listening to what she's saying, you know, but it, there's nothing this is not a personal attack by any means i'm simply using she's using this as a training she's getting paid for this she's i'm using this as as an example of what not to do she enters and he looks away and lip licks and this is after a week with this lady so day six we don't get anything but day seven sorry i paused it right at that time so but just watch she enters he turns away lip licks and he's facing the corner so he comes to her now, yeah, because maybe he didn't get any attention on day six. I don't know. Or because when you're in learned helplessness, you know, I'm not saying that she beat him, but if you have a a spouse that's beating you, but then they, they, you know, they still give you attention. They're the only one on this planet that gives you attention. Otherwise they beat you. Then they're going to say, hey, I didn't mean it. I love you. And then you're going to say, okay, I love you too. You know, they, they really mean it. They, they appreciate, you know, you appreciate any time they're not beating you. Again, I'm not saying she's beating this dog, but it, it's no difference from the mental stress and the severe anxiety this dog feels mentally. He is just so fearful, still has to wear gloves to put a slip lead on him. After a week, after a week, you're still wearing gloves with this dog. Now they're just on the hands. They're not all the way up to your forearm now. Shakes off some of that anxiety. Now he's on a slip uh, choke chain again, saying hi to dogs. Little red choke chain there. Lots of other dogs. 
beautiful dogs. Cat wants to go sniff. Says hi to the cat. <laughs> cat says back off, and he's showing more curiosity. So now it looks like he kind of wants to play. He's got his hackles up a little bit. So now he's running circles while, you know, running around on a choke chain, which can lead to a correction, you know, that, that you're not meaning for him to, which is why I don't like choke chains or slip chains or slip leads or collars or anything like that. Um, that's an adorable little cat. I mean, very, very cute little kitty. Okay, so he's scratching. This is all day nine. He's running around. He seems fine, but we're not seeing her touching him. So now this is play bow, but he can't really run without getting corrected on the choke chain, which can lead from play to aggression very quickly. Not to mention it damages the trachea and whatnot. So he sees another kitty. He's fine. We're playing. He's dragging a long line. Again, on a choke chain, very dangerous. Don't ever have your dog running. Don't use a choke chain, period, or a slip chain. Um, or slip collar of any type, and especially not with a long line, because this dog can easily, it's already on there tight, this dog can trip on anything and choke himself and cause damage to the thyroid glands and um, whatnot. And I know firsthand, because I used to use one of these, because a trainer told me I needed one, and Adonis had, um, you know, developed thyroid issues and breathing problems as he got older. I trained him with one of these at six months old, thinking, you know, I didn't know anything, and um, to an 11 and a half, he's still dealing with issues. So day 14, she's telling him down. Again, we still haven't worked on any touching, but now we're working on obedience. So obedience is different than touching this dog. Working with Randy's parents on how to continue his training. And that, that I, I'm telling you, man, that choke chain is on incorrectly, I think. From what little I know about them is that it's supposed to be loose, not tight and hanging like that. You have it on so it's not constantly correcting. So there she's showing them how to walk and put it into a sit. Blah, 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 blah. But no touching, we notice. Oh, okay, so she gave him a little pat there. Oh, okay, so he is patting. But you got results, but how, you got, how did you get them? She didn't even show how she got them, really. She may have explained it better. But just because the dog looks happy does not mean that he did not soil himself. But just because he looks happy does not mean he, he did not soil himself after she wrestled with him for an hour to put a muzzle on. So the results you get and how you get them are very important. So just because they say that he's <laughs> a happy little dog now, I hope he is happy. I hope he's safe, but this is not how I would do it. So anyway, this is just um, another video on what not to do when training aggression, uh, aggressive dogs that don't like touching. So um, thanks for watching. Let me know what you would like to see next time. And let me know what you thought of this video. And until then, stay positive.